In this video, we are going to learn how to draw shear force diagram and bending moment diagram for a simply supported beam as shown in figure. So the statement is given as draw shear force diagram and bending moment diagram for a simply supported beam AP 8 meter long is loaded as shown in figure. So this is the simply supported beam of length 8 meter and carrying a uniformly distributed load of 10 kN per meter over a length of 4 meter and there is one point load of 50 kN is acting on the beam at point C. So for this setup, we have to draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. So first of all, I will draw the free body diagram for this beam section. So for solving this numerical problem, first we have to convert this uniformly distributed load into point load. So to convert this, I will multiply this UDL value with the length over which the UDL acts. So the point load equal to UDL of 10 kN per meter multiply by distance dp that is 4 meter. So here, I will get the converted point load of 40 kN. Now this converted point load is acting on the beam at the midpoint of length over which the UDL acts. Now this type of problem we are going to solve in three steps. In the first step, we have to calculate the values of support reaction forces R A and R P. So to calculate these values, I will use two equations of equilibrium. That is first equation is summation F y equal to 0. That means addition of all forces in the vertical axis equal to 0. And the second equation is summation of moment equal to 0. So here in the first equation, while I am doing the addition of all the vertical forces, I will consider upward forces as positive and downward forces as negative. Here R A and R B are the vertical reaction forces acting on the beam in the upward direction. So as per the sign convention, I will add these forces with positive sign. And the point load of 50 kN is acting on the beam in the downward direction. So as per the sign convention, I will add this force with negative sign. And the converted point load of 40 kN is acting on the beam in the downward direction. So as per the sign convention, I will add this force with negative sign. Therefore, after calculating, this will get the equation that is Ra plus Rp equal to 90 kN. So I will give this as equation number 1. Now the next equation is summation of moment equal to 0. So for calculating this moment, either we can take moment at point A or at point B and here my sign convention would be clockwise moment as positive and anti-clockwise moment as negative. So for taking moment at point A, I will fix the beam at point A. Now here, 50 kN force will be pushing this beam towards downward. So it rotates the beam in clockwise direction from the fixed point. And as per the sign convention, for clockwise movement, I will add this force with positive sign. Now as per decided, movement is always forced into distance from fixed point. So here plus 50 kN is the force into 2 meter is the distance from fixed point and here converted point load of 40 kN will be pushing the beam towards downward. So it rotates the beam clockwise from fixed point and for clockwise movement I will add this force with positive sign and the movement is forced into distance from fixed point. So here plus 40 kN is the converted point load into 6 meter is the distance from fixed point. Now here reaction force Rb will be pushing this beam towards upward. So it rotates the beam anticlockwise from fixed point. So as per the sign convention, for anticlockwise movement, I will add this force with negative sign. 
and as per decided, moment is forced into distance from fixed point. So here minus R B is the force into eight meter is the distance from fixed point. So these are the moments which we have. So therefore, by calculating this, I will get the value of reaction force R B as forty two point five kilonewton. Now I will put this value in equation number one. And after calculating, I will get the value of reaction force R A as forty seven point five kilonewton. So now with the help of these calculated values of R A and R B, I will further calculate the values of shear forces at all the points of beam. So the next step is calculations of shear forces. And for shear force calculation, our sign convention is upward forces are considered as positive. and downward forces are considered as negative and here you should note that while calculating the shear force at a particular point load you can calculate shear force values for left side and right side of that particular point load but while calculating the shear force at uniformly distributed load you should calculate shear force values at start point and end point of uniformly distributed load That is shear force at point D and shear force at point B. We need to calculate. But in this problem, at point B, there is reaction force R B, which is a point load. And since it is a point load, yes, as per the rule, I will calculate the shear force values at left side and right side of that point load. At point A, there is reaction force R A, which is a point load. And since it is a point load, yes, as per the rule, I will calculate the shear force values at left side and right side of point A. Now at point C, there is one point load, so I'll calculate shear force values at left side and right side of point C. So first to calculate shear force at point A to its left, that is S F at A to the left, equal to. So here, as you can see, there is no force is acting at the left side of point A. Therefore, S F at A to the left equal to zero. So to draw the shear force diagram, I will first draw a horizontal reference line of zero kilonewton shear force. So here I'll mark this point of zero kilonewton shear force on the reference line. Now, if I go to the section to the right side of point A. That is S F at A to the right, equal to. Then there is reaction force R A that we had calculated as forty seven point five kilonewton, which is acting on the beam in the upward direction. So as per the sign convention, I will consider upward force as positive. So here the shear force is plus forty seven point five kilonewton. Here as the shear force value is positive, so I will mark this value above the reference line. Of zero kilonewton shear force, and I'll connect these two points with a vertical line. Now at point C, there is one point load. Therefore, first to calculate shear force at point C to its left, that is S F at C to the left, equal to. And here I'll carry forward previous value of shear force up to point A to its right, which is forty seven point five kilonewton. And when we go to the left side of point C, then there is no load is acting on the beam at left side of point C. Therefore, S F at C to the left equal to forty seven point five kilonewton. Here, as you can see, there is no variation in shear force values. Here, I'll mark the horizontal line with shear force value as forty seven point five kilonewton. Now, next to calculate shear force at point C. To its right, that is S F at point C. To its right, equal to. So here I'll carry forward previous value of shear force up to point C. To its left, which is forty seven point five kilonewton, and when we go to the right side of point C, then there is one point load of fifty kilonewton acting on the beam in the downward direction. So as per the sign convention, I will consider downward force as negative. So here I will add this point load of fifty kilonewton with negative sign. Therefore, after calculating, 
this will get the shear force value as minus 2.5 kN. Here as the shear force value is negative, hence I will mark this point of shear force below the reference line of 0 kN shear force and I will connect these two points with a vertical line. Now the point D is the starting point of UDL. Hence I am taking section to point D and I will calculate the shear force value at point D that is SF at point T equal to Now there is no load on the beam between the right side of point C and point T Therefore, shear force remains constant that is shear force at point D equal to minus 2.5 kN Here as there is no variation in shear force value so I will make the horizontal line with shear force value as minus 2.5 kN now at point B, there is reaction force Rb. Therefore, first to calculate shear force at point P to its left, that is SF at point P to the left equal to. And here I'll carry forward previous value of shear force up to point D, which is minus 2.5 kN. And when we go to the left of point P, then there is uniformly distributed load of 10 kN per meter which we had already converted into point load of 40 kN which is acting on the beam in the downward direction and as per the sign convention I will consider the downward force as negative Yes, I will add this point load of 40 kN with negative sign Therefore, after calculating this will get the shear force value as minus 42.5 kN Here as the shear force value is negative Hence, I will mark this point of minus 42.5 kN below the reference line of 0 kN shear force. And here the type of load is UDL over the length of 4 meter. Hence, to draw the shear force diagram, I will indicate UDL with an inclined line. So, I will connect these two points with an inclined line. Now, next to calculate shear force at point B to its right, that is SF at point B to its right equal to So here I will carry forward previous value of shear force up to point P to its left which is minus 42.5 kN and when we go to the right side of point P then there is reaction force Rb of 42.5 kN which is acting on the beam in the upward direction So as per the sign convention I will consider upward forces as positive So here I will add this upward force of 42.5 kN with positive sign. So here plus 42.5 kN minus 42.5 kN gives me the value of shear force at 0 kN. So I'll mark this point of 0 kN shear force on the reference line. And I will connect these two points with a vertical line. And here is shear force diagram. What are the portion drawn above the reference line? I will show this portion with positive sign and the portion which is drawn below the reference line I will show this portion with negative sign So here we have completed the shear force diagram Now the next step is calculations of bedding movement So bedding movement at a section of beam is calculated as the algebraic sum of the movement of all the forces acting on one side of the section So to calculate bending movements we can start either from left end of beam or from right end of beam Here I will start from left hand side of the beam So whenever you are calculating the bending movements you should remember these conditions So here for simply supported beam the condition is at the ends of simply supported beam the bending movement will be zero so bending moment at point A and bending moment at point B will be zero. So to draw the bending moment diagram, firstly I will draw the reference line of zero kN meter bending moment. So here I will mark these values with the points on the reference line. So now we have to calculate bending moment at point C. So here, in case of simply supported beam, while you are doing the calculation for bending moment. At a particular point, you should always add 
मोमेंट ऑफ ऑल द फोर्सेस प्रेजेंट आइदर फ्रॉम लेफ्ट एंड ऑफ बीम और फ्रॉम राइट एंड ऑफ बीम अप टू दैट पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट एट विच यू आर कैलकुलेटिंग द बेंडिंग मूवमेंट एंड फॉर बेंडिंग मूवमेंट कैलकुलेशन अवर सैन कन्वेशन इज फॉर सैगिंग इफेक्ट ऑफ बीम द फोर्स इज कंसिडर एज पॉजिटिव एंड फॉर हगिंग इफेक्ट ऑफ बीम द फोर्स इज कंसिडर एज नेगेटिव सो फर्स्ट टू कैलकुलेट बेंडिंग मूवमेंट एट पॉइंट सी दैट इज बी आर सफिक्स सी इक्वल टू हेर एट लेफ्ट हैंड साइड ऑफ पॉइंट सी देर इज रिएक्शन फोर्स आर ए ऑफ फोर्टी सेवन पॉइंट फाइव किलो नोटन विच इज एक्टिंग ऑन द बीम इन द अपर डायरेक्शन ड्यू टू दिस फोर्स द बीम शोज द सैगिंग इफेक्ट एंड फॉर सैगिंग इफेक्ट ऑफ बीम आई विल कंसिडर दिस फोर्स एज पॉजिटिव सो आई विल एड दिस फोर्स विथ पॉजिटिव साइन एंड एज पर डिसाइडेड द मूवमेंट इज फोर्स मल्टीप्लाई बाई डिस्टन्स सो आई मल्टीप्लाई दिस फोर्स विथ द डिस्टन्स from point of action of force therefore after calculating this will get the value 95 kN meter so as it is positive value of pendi moment is i'll mark this point above the reference line of pendi moment 0 kN meter now there is no any load present between point a and point c therefore to draw the pendi moment diagram i will connect these two points With an inclined line. Now next we have to calculate bending moment at point D, that is beam surface D, equal to here at left hand side of point D, there is reaction force R A of forty seven point five kilo newton, which is acting on the beam in the upward direction. Due to this force, the beam shows sagging effect. And for sagging effect of beam, I will consider this force as positive. So I will add this force with positive sign, and as per decided, the moment is force into distance. So I will multiply this force with the distance from point of action of force, that is four meter. And here at point C, there is one force of fifty kilo newton, which is acting on the beam in the downward direction. Due to this force, the beam shows hugging effect, and for hugging effect of beam. I will consider this force as negative, so I will add this force with negative sign, and I will multiply this force with the distance from point of action of force, that is two meter. Therefore, after calculating, this will get the value ninety kilonewton meter. So as it is positive value of bendy moment, hence I will mark this point of bendy moment above the reference line of bendy moment zero kilonewton meter. Now there is no any load between point C and point D. Therefore, to draw the bending moment diagram, I will connect these two points with an inclined line. And here, from point D to point B, there is UDL. Hence, to draw the bending moment diagram, I will indicate UDL with a parabolic curve. Hence, I will join these two points with a parabolic curve. Now, see again C. This bendy moment diagram is drawn above the reference line. Here I'll show this portion by plus sign. So here I have completed the shear force diagram and bendy moment diagram for this simply supported beam.